Okay, folks, welcome to another edition of Rod's Random Reviews. This is one of my RV posts. It's uh, right before Christmas here in Alabama. Uh, has it been below freezing? No, not really. But here I am in my uh, Integra Class C. Uh, I park it over here under, you know, under an awning or under a cover. Um, so I do not get sunlight, but I do get some protection from the elements. Uh, like many of you, you probably do have solar panels, uh, which doesn't do much. It doesn't do anything really. I, I looked at my solar power reader and I get, you know, maybe a watt or two every day <laughs> when it's in the shade. But here we are, um getting ready for winter i may not drive this thing for another two or three months till march but um you might hear the generator running so when you run your generator you know you're gonna want to uh, uh put a load on it so i've turned my heater on inside my electric heater uh, yeah you definitely want a load on it just running it, I don't think does very much good. Maybe even a little bit of harm. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Blue Ox left that on for the winter. No need moving that. But what I wanted to talk about is what do you all do about antifreeze? I'm guessing these big diesels use the same antifreeze that we're all used to here. But uh, yeah, this is my first year, so yeah, usually I'm wearing some sort of mechanics gloves. Right this minute I've got on, even though I'm not a hunter, I've got on these hunter gloves. Partially because they got these little tips on them that I can use my iPhone with. But uh, cooling system, look at all this. Fill the engine cooling system with the water heater valves closed. If the heater circuit was drained, open only valve, do all this. Turn the key and set the heater to hot of course I know the hot you know it's gonna run everything through all the all the circuits and all the valves there and if you're bleeding then start the engine if not running water cooler fill as necessary to full mark run engine until thermostat opens shut engine off allow to cool after the engine has cooled top off coolant all right so I've sort of done some of that uh, don't know if all that's required but I did run the engine for a while, you know, I backed it out. And look here, here's low, here's full, but it kind of ventures up over there. Maybe that's cause I was just running it, but I am gonna put a little bit more, even though it only gets down to, um, you know, they're talking like it may get down to 2019 or so here in a couple of days. So anyway, uh, getting ready to put some peak in there. Okay, uh, probably didn't put more than a quart in there. As you can see, I'm up to the fill line now. And uh, so there you have it. Uh, that's what I did there. I'll clean that funnel off, those of you that are worried about it. Uh, so yeah, so I guess the next step is to put this back on, get in there, turn everything on, turn the heater on, wide open, let this cycle through, then we'll come back out and look and see if this level has moved at all. Yeah, big freight liner, freight liner. By the way, I have two or three pairs of these mechanics gloves. Uh, these mechanics gloves I use, I don't know why they're up here. I need to move them. Uh, I use them when I'm fiddling around and hooking up the Jeep, and unhooking the Jeep and doing stuff like that. I use the other mechanics gloves when I'm dealing with diesel fuel, uh, dealing with maybe oil, dealing with, um, hazmat. I don't know if those are really hazmat or not, but um, uh, yeah, 
when I'm dealing with the liquids, I can use it the other ones. And sometimes I even put these plastic sleeves on top of the mechanics glove. So yeah, I'll put these, and if I'm dealing with dumping, a lot of times I'll put the mechanics gloves on, those other ones you saw, and I'll put these plastic ones on top of it. Because when I'm turning those knobs and stuff, I don't want, uh, you know, it just seems like it's a little easier if you have those mechanics gloves underneath. Anyway, I just thought I would share that, that if you don't have some of these mechanics gloves, get you two or three pairs and have them in different parts. And um, yeah, so let's get up here and start the All right, I've got everything running here. Uh, looks like water temperature is still down there. Uh, got the heater on hot. So hopefully uh, beginning to move some of that. You can see here, I thought I was videoing a minute ago and I missed all of this up front stuff, but yeah, only 5,700 miles on this puppy. Water temperature is still down there around 100. Um, see the oil pressure and everything there. Yeah, I popped everything on. Uh, trying to see what my coolant and all is looking like. Yeah, I don't do any fancy editing. All this is what you see is what you get. You see I'm bulk charging here. Uh, yeah, house says it's at 14. It was on 12.7 earlier, but I have the generator running. I have the heater going. And I'm trying to put a load on the... Uh, I didn't want lights, what I want, temperature. All right, so yeah, it was about 34, 35 degrees in here when I first got here. And I just decided to set it on heat pump, 55 degrees, just to put a little bit of a load on the generator. And uh, you see what's going on here. Um, yeah, winter time, not, uh, Go power. Yeah, we backed it out in the sun here. And you can see I've gotten five amps, a whopping five amps, seven day average, seven amps. I'm sure I all got there being in the shade, but there you have it. Um, so yeah, uh, comments welcome on how you haven't really winterized this RV. Like I said, here in Alabama, I'm in North Alabama, so it doesn't get terribly cold for very long. I guess if we see it's gonna be, if the high is below freezing, maybe I'll get interested in taking more, a little better care of it. But the lows, they're saying the low may get down to 20 here. Did I say that already? But anyway, uh, here we are with the slides all in. Yeah, I've got these doors off because my doggone washing machine has a bad board in it. So if any of you are having trouble with your Whirlpool, you can really see it there, Whirlpool washing machine, let me know how it's going. Theoretically, I've gone to the local Whirlpool guy and uh, he came out and looked at it. And, uh, da, 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 got to order a part. And man, that's been 30 days ago. So here we are trying to make sure the RV is okay for the winter. Now water, I just drained everything. I did not put any uh, anything in the water pipes. I just, I've always had pretty good luck with my other RV. Never put anything, never had anything to freeze that I'm aware of. Okay, here we are. It's been running for maybe five minutes. Level is still there. Still don't think. Might as well take that off. This is going to fly off and get in a belt or something, so I'm just going to take this off. I think it's a good idea to leave it just flopping there to you. Uh, don't use starting foot. Eh, I'm not going to be messing with that anyway. Alright, so here's where we are. Continuing the uh, 
high level winterizing here. Just letting the generator run, letting the engine run, topped off the uh, antifreeze. Still loving the uh, Integra Accolade Super C 22. Just gotta get a couple of kinks worked out before my one year warranty's up. Of course, I do have the extended warranty as well, but need some electrical. Need that 30, 300 amp fuse to quit blowing. Need the washing machine fixed. And what else went out? Oh yeah, the uh, one of the recliners, the electricity went out. So, bought it in Iowa, Des Moines, Iowa, RV1. No real complaints there. Those people did, did a pretty good job. It's just trying to get these little things fixed. Do I want to drive two hours to Iowa? Don't think so. Oh, not two hours, two days. <laughs> uh, or get on the Bankston list. But I finally on the list here for Bankston Motorhomes in Huntsville, Alabama to take care of these warranty items. I get in March 17th, I think. They have like a four month wait. Unless you purchased your RV here, then I think they get you in in the next week or two. Anyway. Such is life in the RV ownership. Okay, been running about five to 10 minutes. You can see the water temperature has jumped up above the 100 there finally. Um, oil pressure, PSI staying consistent. Of course, the brake, air, Air Force One and all that stuff going on. Air brakes are in the white try to keep reminding myself, look, 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 make sure they're in the white before you get out on the road. Okay, I've had it off for five minutes or so now. I don't know if it's cooled that much. But, uh, looks like the level is staying right where it was when I had it running. Oh well, see the engine's off now. So, uh, yep, should be fine. If it gets real cold, should be fine. Whatever you do, make 110% sure you batten down the hatches. Yep, when it's cold outside, obviously these don't flip over as well. Doesn't give as much. Be interesting to see how long these last. Hey folks, I've had your Freightliner for or another Super C for five or ten years. Do you have to replace these every three or four years? Anyway, maybe not. Y'all, hey, while I've got your attention here, where can I buy one of these? I'll tell you why I ask. I want the small one. Uh, but I think I want to put let me back up here. I think I want to put another small one right here. Because when I'm riding shotgun and I'm trying to help my wife, for whatever reason, I don't know how to explain it unless I was sitting in there and driving down the road, but I think if I had one down here, an additional one, leave this one where it is, but additional one, I could help her know if there's anything in the right lane. You know, we're in our automobiles, we're in our Jeeps, we're in our nice cars, and they have all of these uh, ding, 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 there's something in your blind spot. And I know this is supposed to tell you what's in your blind spot, but it seems to me like when I'm riding shotgun, if I had one down there, I could, uh, I could see better, have a better visual. All right. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to put my Google camera on, Google search, Google camera, and see if it'll find that. I'll let you know. Okay, those of you that are still with me, let's see where we are here. For grins, solar is up to 7 amps. Huh, 7 day average did go up a little bit. House battery, 13.9. Generator still running, obviously. Uh, let's look at the temperature. We've raised the temperature up to 47 from about 35. Did have the heater up front going. It's 
So I don't know. I've had the refrigerator going. I've had the heat pump going. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll turn that off. Let's run the rear here heat pump for just a little bit. Oops, we don't want it that hot. There we go. Took it a couple of minutes to kick in. So, you know, listen to this. I do have the soft start on these. Uh, so that I do have the lithium batteries. Four lithiums. They're the Vipers. Um, so anyway, I've got the soft start. Um, works okay doesn't work as well as I was thinking they were going to work as far as being able to run the air conditioner and things with a soft start. But anyway, this is where I am. Those of you that have hung in with me so far, maybe I'll run this rear hit pump a little bit and feel like uh, I've put enough load on the generator, ran the engine a little while, I'm not driving it today, but... All right, we got everything off. You can see uh, there's a little bit of sunshine coming in there. In the summertime, I go ahead and put a cover on that windshield. But uh, there you have it. I think I've got the winterizing as much as I'm going to winterize. So check these locks. I don't think you know we're in a area here. Uh, Generator no longer running, obviously. Just one last walk around. Lock, lock. That one doesn't lock. Lock. Yep, gonna have to wash this puppy. I'm gonna get ready to get her out again. Locked. Locked. Well, there you have it, folks. Comments welcome on hopefully... Uh, you know, the folks in Florida, the folks in uh, Southern California, places like that, you're not having to worry about antifreeze. Well, yeah, you do. Uh, you don't want to overheat. But there's where we park it, folks. Thanks for watching Rod's Random Reviews. Like, subscribe. And I'm always enjoy looking at other people's RV videos because you're still learning 24 7 365 doesn't matter if you've been an RV owner for 20 years you're still learning because things change things change